Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and you know, I've just realized something. It's been quite a while since I've released a dessert recipe. Now, I know they're probably the most infrequent recipes I release, mostly because I don't really fancy myself a baker, and mostly also because I feel like if I'm gonna release a dessert, it's gotta be absolutely to die for delicious. So, it was really staring me in the face the other day when I was making chocolate chip cookies. I have a regular recipe for those, really very simple to make. I said, how about I do a deep dish style, gigantic chocolate chip cookie that's not gonna be crunchy like a chocolate chip cookie or even really super crumbly like one, but more like almost like a little bit of a cake and a brownie consistency where it's ooey, gooey, chewy, and just absolutely spectacular on every single level. This one could not be easier to make. It's literally like a deep dish chocolate chip cookie and wait until you Sunday it up at the end. Make this on Sunday. It doesn't have to be on Sunday that you make it. Just make it a Sunday with an AE, you know what I mean? Let's go to the Instant Pot. Well, first we're gonna go to the stand mixer and mix together the most amazing simple batter. You probably already have most of these ingredients lying on hand at your house. And we're going to make from there the most amazing deep dish chocolate chip cookie you've ever known. Right in the Instant Pot. Ooey gooey chewy delight. Let's do it. So the first thing I want to do is grab myself a nice, lovely stand mixer. You can use any color. Or if you don't have one of these, you can use a hand mixer, but I'm telling you right now, a stand mixer is the best thing in the world to mix a cookie dough. It just makes everything so much easier and saves some calluses, I can tell you that. All right, so to this bowl, I'm going to add in one whole stick or eight tablespoons, or a quarter of a pound or a half a cup. You see all those options there you have? It's so confusing. Um, I just like to say a stick of salted butter. Most people use uh, unsalted butter for a cookie dough, but I like to use salted butter. I just think it gives it a little bit of an extra oomph there. The key though is for your butter to be soft, and you can achieve that in one of two ways. You could either leave it out on the counter for about two hours if you have the time, or you can just pop the whole stick in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds until it becomes nice and soft. You see that? You don't want it to be melted at all, just nice and soft, so just keep an eye on it. Put it inside of the bowl. And now we're gonna cream this butter up by putting my paddle attachment on here. That's better than the whisk attachment for a cookie dough. A paddle is always best. And then we're gonna put this in there, lower it, and cream it up. Starting on like a two speed, and then I'm gonna work my way to a four speed. And let it do this for about 15 seconds. Okay, and we are all nice and creamed. Look at that. Now just take a silicone spatula, these will be very handy when making any sort of thick batter. And then just drag it along that paddle to get anything into the bowl. Scrape the sides of the bowl so all the butter is mostly in the middle. Alright, wonderful. And now we're going to turn this butter into a batter. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add in a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons each of white granulated sugar and a light brown sugar. Now normally I would say don't worry about dark or light brown sugar, it's a difference, it pretty much tastes the same, but in a cookie, you want it to be the light brown because otherwise I think it'll look too dark. So try to go for light brown if you can. Regardless, a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of each of these. Add it in there. A half a teaspoon each of just regular iodized salt and baking soda, not baking powder, use baking soda. Add that in there. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I optionally love to add in one and a half teaspoons of pure maple syrup. It's just a little thing and I love doing this. So try adding that if you want, it's optional, but it gives it a little something extra in there. I think it makes a little bit of a difference. Maybe I'm just psyching myself out, but I, or superstition. I, I just like to use it, but you don't have to. All right, I'm gonna lower the head of my stand mixer back into the bowl, lock it, and then go again at a two speed. And I wanna do this for about 20 seconds until everything is combined. All right, and after about 20 seconds of everything mixing up in there, I wanna take an egg that I've already cracked. Just do that, it helps save cracking it directly into the bowl in case you get some shell in there. One large egg and add it in. And let it go for another 20 seconds. Again, I'm at the two speed of my stand mixer. That's just one above the stir speed, which is the lowest. And that's perfect. I'm turning it off. I'm raising the head of the stand mixer here. And lovely. I'm going to just, again, push everything off of my paddle into the bowl, as well as scraping the sides and making sure that's in there. All right, so we have all this lovely stuff going on in there with all those flavors, sugar, butter. And now, if you saw the Waitress musical, we need to add our key ingredient to tie it all together, flour. 
flour, all-purpose flour we're going to use for this. Just simple all-purpose flour, and you don't even need to sift it. Ah, uh, but flour can just go all over the place like someone sneezing into snow, except a thousand times worse. It just goes everywhere, like cornstarch can be. It's kind of annoying. So we want to be very mindful about this. Let's lower our stand mixer head back in there, lock it, and at the very lowest speed, let it go, which is stir on many models, it says stir. Add in very gently about half of the flour. Just half of it. And the reason why we're putting it on the slowest speed right now is because otherwise it would go pop and just fly everywhere. Because the, the paddle, if it goes quicker, it's gonna whip all that very delicate light flour around. By keeping it on the lowest speed, it's gonna just mix everything together much more simply. Okay, and once that flour is combined, let's add the rest. And then we're gonna up it to a two speed. Really make sure that all of the sides are scraped down. And there we go, perfect. After about 10, 15 seconds of this, we're good. Let's turn it off, raise the head, and you're gonna see we have a lovely cookie dough clumping to the, our paddle at this time. So what we wanna do is simply remove the paddle and then just get all that dough right off of it, push it right back into the mixing bowl. This is why paddles are also super easy. You can just get everything out of there real simply. Now obviously this wouldn't be a deep dish chocolate chip cookie without the chocolate chips. I'm gonna add in about six ounces of you know the semi-sweet morsels, but you can literally add anything for your chips. Milk chocolate, white chocolate, peanut butter, butterscotch, M&Ms, whatever you wanna do here, about six ounces should do the trick. Just add that in, it's gonna make it pretty chocolate chippy. And now by hand, I'm just gonna take the spatula since it has some goodies still on it, this will help get them off and mix it in. Just mix everything together so the chocolate chips are fully combined in with the dough. There we go, and voila, a perfect, supple, wonderful cookie dough. Just be tempted not to eat it all right now, okay? Just try not to. Plus, you're not supposed to eat raw eggs, they say, you know? I mean, Rocky did it, but you're not supposed to. All right, now let's move on to our springform pan. Okay, now one of the key ingredients to making this deep dish chocolate chip cookie is having a deep dish to cook it in, or bake it in, I should say, or, or air bake, oven bake it in, but whatever, you know, pressure bake. I'm even giving myself anxiety right now. All right, so you see this, it has a latch on there. A spring form pan is what we want, seven by three, something of like that nature, not to exceed really seven inches in diameter. You see this thing, when you open it, lets this drop out. So when it's done cooking in there and it holds its form, we're gonna have the perfectly rounded deep dish cooking and it'll get out super simply. Now here's a little tip for you with these spring form pans. You see how on one side it's a little bit, it goes recessed like that, and the other side it pops up. It's usually meant to be it so it's this way, but it's harder to get things out when there's a little bit of a lip. So what I like to do is I like to flip it and keep the bottom side up. And the easiest way to put this inside is to literally just hold it in the bottom, the middle, encase it with the outer edge of the pan, and then just lock it in. And to make sure it's really locked in, make sure everything over here is flush and we're good to go. Okay, now let's grease this up a bit. You can use either nonstick cooking spray or some additional butter and just grease the bottom of the pan as well as the sides. Then we wanna lay in a parchment round. You can often have these even come with these spring form pans when you order them. Just look for one when you see it online that'll come with like 50 of them or you can just cut your own, it's not difficult. Or just buy separate parchment rounds on your own. And then from there, I wanna spray the top of it. This is gonna ensure that our deep dish cookie isn't sticking at all to this amazing deep dish spring form pan. Okay, now we're gonna get a little down and dirty. I'm gonna take my cookie dough here. Look at this, it just clumps together so nicely. And then just put it inside of our spring form pan. Could really do this in like two handfuls. And I just really wanna then just press everything down, make sure everything's nice and even. And this is totally fine. It doesn't have to be like super perfect, and super like, you know, flush. Like this will work just fine. Okay, now we're gonna top this off with some foil. Put it right on my spring form pan. Doesn't have to be super tight on there, just make sure it's on there so when it pressure cooks, uh, no steam will drip on our cookie. Now we're gonna mosey on over to that instant pot and we're gonna add in one and a half cups of water as well as the trivet. Now you can use the trivet that came with the pot or you can use one of those silicone sling trivets which are also very handy. Now I'm going to carefully rest my spring form pan on top of the trivet. Make sure the foil is covered. It doesn't have to be super tight, just a nice cover there protecting it from any moisture. And now I'm gonna secure my lid 
make sure that I'm in the ceiling position and some lids just like this one will automatically do that. Others you have to make sure that the little nozzles in the ceiling position. All right, so now I want to come down to the control panel on my Instant Pot and hit the pressure cook or manual button depending on your model. And I want to go on this guys for 40 minutes at high pressure. I adjust that using these plus or minus buttons depending on where your last setting was. Your pot remembers that high pressure there. Um, also, if your model doesn't have buttons, it has a knob, you'll adjust using the knob. And also, if your model has a start button, you gotta hit that to get into the process of it going into the pressure cooking. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a start button, after about three seconds to five seconds of doing nothing, it'll start on its own. So since I have the start button, let's hit start. And in this time, go ahead and uh, spend it working out. Use the elliptical, the peloton, because we're about to undo all of that shortly. See you soon. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna allow a 10 minute natural release, and then we'll finish that with a quick release. What a natural release means is we wait 10 minutes, or whatever time is specified during that period. Uh, and the easy way to see that is now the display, after it's counted down and finished its pressure cooking cycle, will we then begin to count up with how much time has elapsed since the pressure cooking was done. So when that reads 10 for 10 minutes, that's when we'll finish with a quick release. And now that 10 minutes of a natural release have passed, we're going to finish this off with a quick release. And that might have been the quickest quick release of all time. All right, let's take our lid off. And then take some oven mitts and carefully remove the trivet from the pot with our pan on it. And then just let it sit on the countertop to rest. You can take the foil off. Oh, lovely. And then we're gonna let this rest and cool for an hour, and then it is time to dig in. Be patient, don't touch it. Let it cool for an hour, you hear me? The reward will be well worth it. In the meantime, uh, walk around the block three times or something with your dog. I'm telling you, you're gonna need it. You're gonna prepare yourself. And after an hour of this amazingness resting, it's gonna pop right out of the springform pan. You'll see the sides will have on their own separated from the perimeter of the pot. Just unlatch. Lift, and my friends, you now have the ultimate deep dish chocolate chip cookie, which is gonna be super soft, not crunchy like a cookie, but that's the whole point of this. It's supposed to be soft and chewy, almost like a chocolate chip cookie brownie. And just wait until you see, we could also make it a sundae if we want. Why not? Make it a sundae. All right, let's serve this up. All right, so I'm gonna cut myself a slice here. Oh, look at this. It's gonna be so perfect, the, the texture, the consistency, super chewy, as it should be in this circumstance, a nice deep dish chocolate chip cookie. And there we go, that parchment paper underneath really comes in handy here, because it's gonna make it really easy to separate from everything else. And right on the plate you go, my chocolate chip cookie deep dish style. I mean, this thing is about an inch thick, wonderful. Wonderful, look at the inside of that. Oof, the best part is now, you can take any of this, if you're not gonna finish it now, and just put it in an airtight container, and you can always microwave it for like five to 10 seconds, and it'll soften up, it's still gonna be soft, but if you wanna give it like that ooey gooey situation with the chocolate chips, see how they're still melted? That's where it's at. Now you can also take a nice slice of this wondrous deep dish chocolate chip cookie, and if you want to, you can always microwave it if you want it to be a little warmer or even softer. It's up to you. It's, although it's already super chewy and soft, add a little bit of ice cream to, on the top, a little dollop of some vanilla, and then put some chocolate syrup, and then maybe some caramel syrup. And look at that. Look at that. A gorgeous deep dish chocolate chip cookie sundae. Also, feel free to put a cherry on top, of course. And I'm gonna try this out before this giant Pac-Man chocolate chip cookie cannibalizes itself. Okay, first I wanna just try out my cookie on its own. It's so chewy. It's basically a chocolate chip cookie brownie. It's that spectacular in terms of how chewy it is. It's not gonna be a crunchy chocolate chip cookie. If you want that, make chocolate chip cookies. This is a deep dish cookie. It's gonna, you don't want it to be like hard and crumbly. You want it to be nice and sliceable like a cake. Mm. sinful. And here is my spectacular, spectacular sundae. You could put anything on this. Nuts, sprinkles, cherries, whipped cream, whatever. This is a crime almost. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Easily one of the most tasty, decadent. I'm in love, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven with this. 
I gotta stop eating it though. I, I'm trying to be good right now, but the things I do for you, next level, and not hard to make, like ridiculously easy in fact. Just mix together some things in a mixing bowl and then literally put it inside of a pan, bake it, or pressure bake it, and or steam bake it, and poof, you're done. Guys, spectacular. Check out my other recipes at PressureLowCooking.com. And I wrote some cookbooks, three of them to be exact. I have the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, the orange one, the lighter Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, the blue one, and the yellow one, the simple comfort Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. This is what they call a galley. This isn't the actual book just yet. It's coming out in April of this year, but it's gonna be spectacular. It's gonna be the same color, yellow. So I have orange, blue, and yellow, and Facebook.com slash PressureLowCooking. Like that page. Every time anything comes out, you'll know about it. Uh, I try to share important tips and deals when they pop up as well, so don't miss that. And that uh, pressure love cooking on all the other socials. Thanks a lot again, and next time you watch an episode of Sesame Street, just make sure Cookie Monster is not on the screen while you're eating this, because uh, the, the, things could get a little messy at that point. He might jump to the screen and steal it from you. Enjoy.